Good morning, everybody. Are you ready to fly today? <laughs> oh, that is so good, and so am I. So where are we going to go, you ask? How does a flight across Florida sound to you? Sound good? Seven 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 three hundred er that's his YouTube name. He wrote to me and he said, can you fly Tampa to Miami? It should be less than an hour, he says. Well, that's a wonderful flight. That's just the right length of flight as well. So I checked it out and I found that there are several flights that go between Tampa and Miami. And I picked the one that is American Airlines, American Airlines Flight 795. And that is AA795. And that does the route. It just goes back and forth. I got confused when I first looked this up because 795 is the same from Miami to Tampa. Apparently, it's just like a bus route. It's the same one going back and forth throughout the day. <laughs> so that's the flight number. Now, Tampa KTPA airport scenery is made by Fly Tampa. <laughs> Who would have guessed? And Miami KMIA airport scenery is made by Latin VFR. Both of these companies do a brilliant job with detail and they all have features, lots of features in them, which we will explore when we get into them. So if you're ready, 777-300ER, I wish it was an easier name, but if you're ready, then let's go into pre-flight, shall we? Well, here I am looking at American Airlines 795 on FlightAware. And here you can see the designator right below there, AA795. This particular one arrived over 22 hours ago at gate Delta 3 in Miami, right here, you see. It departed gate F84. Now, if it's possible, when I go into the sceneries that that gate is open, then that is where we'll start and I'll aim to try to finish and dock at that same gate in Miami. Looking at the route, it's a pretty straightforward route. Departure swinging out, it looks like, then straight down, then across the Everglades and then into Miami. Looking at the 24,000 feet, okay, 24,000 feet is something that we can do. All right, good, then let's go in and have a look at Windy. Oh, now this is interesting. Look at this, <laughs> it looks like the airport is the origin, doesn't it? All the wind is blowing out from Tampa. <laughs> oh, well. But it says here the wind is 180 degrees, four knots, visibility nine statute miles, few clouds at 2200 feet, but it's VFR, scattered at 9000 feet and scattered at 25000 feet. Temperature is 29 degrees. Altimeter 29.99, just a little bit above standard barometric pressure. And this says at north northwest there are cumulonimbus. 
Oh, and at Southwest. Wow. Okay, so there's certainly some interesting weather in the area. Now, looking at the Terminal Aerodrome report, and this was issued an hour and 43 minutes ago, it says the wind is variable three knots. Shower in the vicinity, clouds scattered 2,000 and uh, broken 25,000 feet. And it's saying that the wind will be 240 degrees. So there's a little bit of change around here. So we're not sure which actual runway we're going to be departing from. Let's have a look at the runways. Well, you can see that there are quite a few runways here. The one that I was looking at, at uh, on Flight Aware, it took off, I think, from this one and departed because right about in this vicinity, I think, yes, I think it's this vicinity, this is where those gates are. So we'll try to be in the same location. But it took off, of course, from this runway, which is number 10, one left, one left, is the one that it took off from. So we'll have to see whether or not we get the same or a different one. Going to Windy for Miami. Here's Miami and wind seems to be a little variable. It's calling for 360 degrees in the meteorological aerodrome report. That's what META stands for. But in the terminal aerodrome report, it's saying wind is 120 degrees at seven knots. So again, it's very changeable. But it says 22 minutes ago, it, visibility was 10 statute miles, cloud scattered 2,500, scattered 6,000, scattered 11,000, scattered 25,000, my goodness. So there's a quite a little bit of activity with the clouds. Several layers to have to negotiate. Temperature 29, a little bit warmer than England today. And dew point 24, altimeter 29.99. Again, just a little bit above standard. And it's saying there's cumulonimbus in the area. Well, so which one are we going to be coming in to land on? Hmm. It's anybody's guess, I think, looking at the wind at the moment. So it's all up to the tower as to what they give us. All right, let's go in and make our flight plan. We are, of course, Ryanair and we are 186. And we are definitely going to be looking different from all those American airline flights that will be surrounding us. And we're departing from KTPA, KTPA, and we're going to go to KMIA. And KMCO is our alternate. We are Ryanair, of course. <laughs> and there's our registration. Cruise flow file is six. Schedule flight time, one hour, 10 minutes. It's calling for a departure on 19 right and eight right arrival. Okay, well, we might get that. I'm gonna put in 240 since that was the other one. And we are, of course, going to be full and we have one ton of very special freight. Yes, you guessed it, champagne and caviar. There's the route. This first part, that is the standard instrument departure. There's the waypoint. And then this is the uh, instrument arrival. 203 nautical miles. And here's the route. 
pretty straightforward all the way down uh, Fort Myers over Naples and then into Miami from the west and there is oh that is our alternate is Orlando so should things go pear-shaped this is the alternate airport that we will have to look into all right let's go up to the top and save the flight and let's make ourselves a flight plan well here's the flight plan we are 737-800 originating from Tampa and going to Miami with Orlando as the alternate cruising altitude is flight level 240 Airtime, it's saying it will be 41 minutes. Block fuel is 6,025, simply because if we have to change and go to another, to the alternate, it's not exactly uh, a couple of miles away. No remarks from the dispatcher. Here's our Ryanair 186 designation. There's our cruising altitude, and there is our route. This is the alternate and information regarding it. We'll need to know cost index six, average wind for our cruise. And here is the block fuel that we'll need to make sure we have on. There's the reserves, 3,077 kilograms, or just over three metric tons. Trip and taxi, 2.227 metric tons required there. No tanker recommended. And if this is the route that we finally end up with, I'll be putting this in the description box below the video. Here's the wind information. Here's our cruising altitude right there. And you can see that we have some interesting winds and we're only minus 18 degrees in temperature. Looking at the descent at 20,000 feet, there is the wind direction and speed, minus 10. Then when we get to 15,000 feet, it goes up a degree and it's 11 degrees when we get down through 10,000 feet. We'll have to look at this in case there is any icing conditions up aloft in any of those clouds. We'll just have to look out for that. And here is the, the wind pattern. It seems to be all over the place. Part of it is blowing over in that direction, then it's blowing over here, then it's going to be there. So we're going to have some cross winds, certainly, and a little bit of turbulence. We'll have to check and make sure that everybody's seated nicely and, if necessary, bring out the plastic glasses for the champagne instead of the posh crystal, eh? Here's the cruise profile, the vertical profile starting out from Tampa, coming up top of climb, going across and then going down to Miami here. And at this one, it's looking like we're going to be getting mainly headwinds at that altitude. So, well, that's the way it goes. All right, let's go into Navigraph charts then. All right. Click on flights, new flights from SimBrief and bring in the one that we just made. We'll go here, open up the charts list. We'll need the airport info. We'll need the parking gates and coordinates. Just looking at those gates. 84 is down here at the Foxtrot uh, terminal extension right there. So we'll be right at that one to make our start. And this is the departure 
and I'm going to pin that. Going over to our destination, let's open up the charts. We'll need the airport information and parking bays. We're coming in according to this on 08 right. Well, let's have a look at the airport first. If we're coming in on 08 right, then that will be this one, which won't be bad at all if that uh, works out, because then I believe where D3 is, is right up here somewhere. I think that's where D3 is. So let's have a look at the parking bays. Yeah, D3 is right here at this end of that concourse D. So if that's where we end up, uh, so that will not be a bad runway to come in on. So let's go in and bring in uh, 08 right. So we're ILS localizer and pin that. Let's have a look. Oh, well, we can definitely do that. This will bring us straight in for a straight in uh, approach there. How about that? And here's the star and I'll pin it. So looking at this, Arnav, Arnav, there we go. And final. That's it. That's the one. So we come in on this, make a little bit of a dog leg here, intercept the final and come straight down the final for runway 08 right. Oh, there we have it. OK, close everything up. And now we are ready to go into the cockpit and make sure all of our passengers are comfortable. Oh, there you are. Do come on in and take your seat. Remember, buckle up and let me tell you where we are. We are here at Tampa International Airport and we are right at stand F. 84. We're on that F wing and we're at number 84. So we are exactly in the same place that the originating flight that we checked out earlier departed from. Now, there is some rumbling in the background and it is not vehicles, it is thunder. Whoa. So let me give you a quick a quick look at this wonderful scenery, which of course is made by Fly Tampa. Here I am looking out over to the left side of the aircraft. There's a lot of great detail here, but there's also a lot of cloud activity. And I am using Active Sky and I'm using real live weather, of course, in order to make this as accurate a flight as possible. So my frame rate is 12, 13, 12, 13, maybe 14. It's hovering around that a little bit. So not particularly brilliant on the frame rate. But then again, when I put this scenery in, I ticked all the boxes. So I have everything in this. And these are 4K monitors that I'm using and each of them, there's three, and they're at full resolution. So not bad for 13 frames per second with all of this high detail. Now I did go and kick the tires and I've checked the fuel. Everything is on board. I wash the windows, but I have a sneaking suspicion that I'm going to regret washing the windows because it just may well rain. And uh, I always hate to wash windows and then see rain spots on them. 
Oh, you can never, never arrange for perfection, can you? All right, time to then start her up, shall we? So first thing that we need to do is turn on the battery, make sure we have enough volts in the battery, turn on the fuel pumps, and then let's start the APU. Now the APU, as you know, is located in the rear. Let me show you what happens with this. Now the low oil pressure light has come on. This, by the way, is the switch to turn on the APU. And then you can see here that the engine gas temperature is rising. The low pressure light went off now. It reaches a peak and then it will start to come back. And when it does, when it stabilizes, I'm looking then for this light to pop on and then I will be able to switch the bus. Ah, oh, there it is. I now have 115 volts up there. Look at that. Pretty good, eh? Now that I've got that on, I can turn on the left and the right IRS. That's our GPS system, and there are two, which so have always got redundancies. Turn on the galley so that we can get a cup of tea. You never know. Emergency exit lights, no smoking, fasten seat belts. Over here, I'm going to put the left and the right window heat on, leave the probes off, of course, for the moment. And I'm going to turn on the left and the right electrical hydraulic pumps. These two lights are the forward hatch, which is open, and the air stairs, which are now extended and down. And looking out, I'm seeing our passengers starting to climb on board. Well done. So over here, I'm now going to need to turn on the APU bleed the recirculating fans, the left and the right packs, and there it is. There's the air conditioning now going in and cooling everything down on the inside. Because I'll bet it is muggy outside here in Tampa today, and this will make everyone feel a lot more comfortable. And then I'm going to turn on the steady light, and that make sure that the ground people know that we are in here and we are preparing the aircraft. Right, I'm going to clear the bottom part of this. We'll check that the air rack is in date and that there are no errors with the program. Go to the position initialization. And we are, of course, starting out from KTPA, so I'll put that in. KT and PA. And we are at gate F84. So I'll put in F84. Let's see if it comes up. Not in the database, so let's just put in 84. Not in the database. All right, I'm going to put this one in, and that brings it up. That's our starting point. So now I'm going to go to the root. Our origin, of course, is KTPA. KTPA. Destination is KMIA. MIA. We are not American Airlines. But we are Ryanair, so RYR and 186. We're the cat among the pigeons. <laughs> Go to next page. And then I put in the one and only waypoint, and that's SABI. So that's S A B and double E. Put that in, activate, execute. Go to fix, put in K M I A. And then we want a four-mile circle, we want a 10-mile circle, and a 30-mile circle around our destination. Going to descent, 
transition level in the United States is 180. So I'm going to put 180 in there. Then we need the information for flight level 200, for flight level 150, and for flight level 100, which is 10,000 feet. Q&H at our destination is 1016, 1016. And then the information our at 200 it is 14814 slash and 8. At 15,000 feet it is 356 at 6, 356 at 6. And at 10,000 feet, it is 79.4, 79 and 4. Then we execute that. Go to departures. And here we need to listen in to the ATIS. So ATIS at Tampa is 126.45. So 126 at 4.5. Tampa International Airport Information, Lima 1, Mida 0, Mida Zulu, Wing 1, 8, 6 at 4, Visibility, Mida, Sky Condition, Few Clouds are 2,200, Mida 1,000, Scattered, Temperature 2, Mida 2.25, Altimeter 1, 0, 1, 6, Landing and Departing, Runway 1, Mida Right and Runway 1, Mida Left. The FR aircraft say direction of flight. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact you have, Lima. Tampa International Airport Information, Lima 1, Mida 0, Mida Zulu. Now there's the radios that I have. That is the standby frequency, which is the ATIS frequency. And this is the clearance frequency that I've just put in. And I can transfer between the two by simply pushing on that button. So we are departing on 19 right and 19 left. So that is not what we thought that we were going to be departing from but let's go ahead and get our IFR clearance so I'm going to re request that Tampa clearance delivery Ryanair 186 IFR to Miami International ready to copy Ryanair 186 is clear to Sierra Alpha Bravo Echo Echo Airport as file fly runway heading climb and maintain minor thousand departure frequency as 119.9 squat 1305 Ryanair 186 cleared to Sierra Alpha Bravo Echo Echo Airport as file fly runway heading climb and maintain minor thousand departure on 11 minor point minor score 1305 Ryanair 186 red back is correct Contact ground on 121.35 when ready to taxi. We're almost ready. In fact, our passengers are on board, so I'm going to bring up the stairs and close the door. And we'll get ourselves... Taxi request and see what they give us. Tampa ground, Ryanair 186 with Mike ready to taxi IFR. Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short of runway, one left using taxiway, Yankee whiskey whiskey, one contact tower on, one one niner point five when ready. Taxiing, hold short runway, one left using taxiway, Yankee whiskey whiskey, one Ryanair 186. Well how about that? It, the wind is all over the place here, but we're given runway 01 left, so I'm going to put that in. We're still going to use the Gandhi 8 departure, so I'm going to put the Gandhi 8 departure in there. And it is the SABI transition, so I'll put that in there and execute that. Go to departures and arrivals for... Miami, we are proposing, hopefully, to come in on 08 right. So ILS 08 right. And we're coming in on the Frog Zulu 2. The Frog Zulu 2. There it is. Frog Zulu 2. And then execute that. 
Right, now we have that in. So now I'm going to go to legs and I'm going to switch to plan and check this route out to see how it works. Right, I'm now going to go through these by step. So there's the Gandhi. It follows a vector going through. There's the Savvy. And join that up with the Frog Zulu arrival. There it is, coming all the way across. And join that. Aseri coming up. There's the leg. Copra lawn all the way on in then to runway eight right. Okay, looks like that's what we have and it looks good. So I'll switch back then to map. Now the decision height in Miami is 450 feet, so I'm going to put 450 in this. And there we go. Got that. Right, now I'm going to go into route and perform the initialization. The reserves are 3077. The trip and taxi is 2227, which comes to 5304 kilograms or 5.3. So 5.3. Reserves 3.1. Cost index is 6, cruise altitude is 240, uh, cruise wind is 15 at 3, transition altitude is 18,000 feet, and double click this and it calculates everything there, so press that to execute. N1 limit. We are not going to do any of the double rates today, so we'll just leave it at that. We'll be using flaps 10. Double click this, and it gives us the center of gravity and the value on the trim wheel of 4.76. One click on each of those gives us the V1, the rotation speed, and V2 liftoff. Since we're 24,000 feet for our cruise, I'm going to always presume that and put it in. Our runway heading is 007. Ah, 007, how about that? Ah, okay. I'll put yours in too then. 007, you're going to be today. <laughs> And 145 for the Mac. I'm going to put 24,000 feet up in here and for the pressurization. There we go. And the elevation at our destination is 9 feet, so I'm going to leave that at zero. Right, now I'm going to put the flight director on here, flight director on there. VNAV, LNAV, we have green lights on both, so arm the throttle, VOR1 on, VOR1 on over there. Now I'm going to turn on the your damper, the flight continuity light went out, so we're looking good. Over here I'm going to turn the weather radar on mine, turn on the data, I'm going to put terrain on yours and derator, and I'm going to go to 20 miles on there, get the TCAS activated so people can see us. So we are, oh, and there is some um, thunderstorm activity right out here. You see that? Let me, let me show you this. Right on our route, our departure route, look at that. There is some thunderstorm activity and that's what we've been hearing. 
Now that's about 30 miles away. So we're going to have to watch for that. Okay, let's do the check. Now, since we're going to be going to runway one, we'll need to have our nose go to the left and our tail to the right. Okay then, <clears throat> fuel is checked, windows all locked, seatbelt signs are on, and door lights are out, MCP is programmed and correct, takeoff thrust bugs are done, CBU pre-flights completed, Aerolon trim is good, taxi takeoff briefing, as I said, we're going to turn our nose to the left and our tail to the right. Anti-collision light is now going on. Right, we are now ready to ask the nice people to give us a pushback. So which engine would you like to start today? Number one on the left or number two on the right? You'd like to start number two? Perfectly fine. Right, I have the Navigraph charts activated here on the right, so I'm just going to enlarge the map a little bit so you can see the route that we're going to have to take. Right, I'm going to adjust my seat and now I'm going to ask the nice people on the ground to give us a push back with our nose to the left. Are you all set? All set? Everything's looking good? Crew, we're about to move. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for push and start. Tail to the right. Copy that. Ready for push, tail right. Police brake brake, please. Parking brake is released. Now, I'm going to have to turn the air conditioning Brakes off released. now. And I'm going to turn this to generator 2 over here. And I'm going to be ready now to start engine number two by turning this switch as soon as we're moving. All right. And over here, the start valve has opened. Here you can see the N2 is winding up, getting going really nice. When that gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. And coming up. Fuel is introduced, and now looking for the engine gas temperature to heat up. Oh yes, there it goes, look at that. Now I'm looking for the low oil pressure light to go out. And there it did. And I can hear the engines starting to crank. Next I'm going to look for 115 volts up there. When we get 115 volts, I know that we've got a generator. There it is. Now I'm going to number one. I'm now starting engine number one. Start valve has opened. The N2 is spinning up. Going very nicely. There it is, coming up. When this gets to 24, then I bring in the fuel. There it goes. Fuel is in. Back complete. Park please. Parking brake is set. Engine gas brake temperature set. is now rising very nicely. Looking for the low oil pressure light to go out. There it did. And things are looking very good. All right, steering pin is disconnected. Watch for the slip release from guidance on your left. Have a good flight. Thank you, gentlemen. Such nice people, aren't they? Such nice people. I'm now going to go to flaps 10 and now I'm going to switch to the main engines for the electricity. I'm going to turn on the air conditioning again, turn off the APU and turn off the APU bleed. And now that the ground equipment is clear, I'm going to turn on the taxi lights. And let's see. 
generators are on, probe heat is now going on, left and right, check. Anti-ice, we're not going to use that for the minute, isolation valve correct, engine start levers idle detent, uh, flight deck door is closed and locked, recall is checked, flight controls checked, flaps, we have green lights, stabilizer trim is correct, auto brake is RTO, speed brake lever down detent, ground equipment is now clear. So we are good to rock and roll. I just made an adjustment on that. So, there's a lot of red ahead there. And that aeroplane has moved in front of us. He's jumped in front of the queue. How about that? All right, break off. Check around, make sure everything is clear and we'll just move out and follow him. Very detailed scenery this, very detailed indeed. cups, paper cups, that's what we've got to use today, paper cups for the champagne. Sorry, I know that's tangy, but... Eight, seven, zero, zero, taxi to the gate. My eight, goodness, eight, seven, zero, zero, taxi that to is the gate. some Delta storm four, activity. Seven, zero, but that's all right. We are bold pilots, we can handle this. Wow, a lot of red there, a lot of red. Well, I don't know if you were anticipating this when you made the flight request 777-300, but that's what we have. Now, I'm just going to toodle down here. I'm not going to go particularly fast because we have to wait for that one to go off. Right, I've got my phone on silent now. Ah, I should have done that first off, shouldn't I? Well, all of this weather activity is certainly having an impact, of course, on my frame rate. I'm 14, 15, 15 frames per second. Wow, that's... There's a lot of a lot of detail in all of those clouds. A lot of detail. I see one aircraft coming in for landing. So I'm going to tune now into the tower. And I'm going to request takeoff clearance. Tampa Tower, Ryanair 1865 FR departure runway 1 left. Ryanair 186 hold short runway 1 left traffic is Airbus A321 on final Corvette 4954 clear to land runway 1 left follow the Airbus A321 on final hold short runway 1 left Ryanair 186 Well we're told to hold short 1 left And I see another aircraft behind him Well, it's going to get busy. 
going to get very busy here. That one just landed. It is dark out there too. We're underneath some heavy cloud here. We're almost in darkness. Now here's the question is, uh, does this one get a clearance to take off? over there. That was one of the features that I put the tick mark in. Exit runway when able. There's one coming in to land. Oh, look at that. He's got to go around. Look at that. Nose up. Gear up.
coming in. Let's see. I need to. Niner, turn next taxiway. Niner, turn next taxiway. Niner, turn next taxiway. Oh, we're at 3,000 feet. 
Traffic. Traffic. Uh, they're over to the right. No passes.
centerline markings on landing, don't you think? Right, we go all the way down here now, all the way until we get to N12. And then we can turn in and find the D3. The D3 stand. Well, we were lucky in as much that we didn't have anybody else coming in on the same runway ahead of us. That could have been awkward. But look at all the water here. My gracious me. Now this is wonderfully detailed airport scenery. This is made by Latin VFR, Latin VFR. And there's a tremendous amount of detail here. Look at all the water on the ground there. All that water. Pacifica 1605, exit runway when able. No wonder I wasn't able to see the center lines. I wasn't able to see anything but water. <laughs> There's somebody coming out ahead of us. But fortunately, he's not going to be kamikaze. He's going to turn onto Pacific another one. One six zero five. Contact ground on one two one point eight. Going to one two one point eight. Pacifica one six zero five. Ah, oh, look at all of that. Look at the detail. Isn't that amazing? And you know what? We are the only Ryanair here. There are no other Ryanair aircraft to be seen. How about that? This is certainly going to wash the uh, underside of the aircraft. There's a lot of water going to be coming up in spray. There are some kam uh -oh, kamikaze vehicles ahead. Miami Tower. Pacifica, Niner 823 and 38 miles southeast inbound ILS runway 30 approach. Pacifica, Niner 823, Miami Tower, make straight in runway 30, altimeter 1016. Fly straight in runway 30, Pacifica, Niner 82. Right, I've just shut the radios off and Look at them, look at them. Go on, buzz off. And there's the tower where all the nice ATC people are at, having their cups of tea and biscuit, and watching us as we surf, <laughs> surf on the taxiway. <laughs> but at least it stopped raining for the minute. The D-Wing is all the way at the end there. But we'll do what we can to find the spot so that we can go in to the same stand as the one that we saw on Flight Aware. You know, there was a lot of rough weather as we departed. I, <coughs> I had to take over and manually steer through some rather vicious looking weather cells 
and go around some of them. It was like trying to go through a minefield. And then when we finally got south of Tampa and uh, about level with Okeechobee, Lake Okeechobee, then it, the air smoothed out a little bit. So I hope that you were able to have something to drink without having everything spilled. But this was certainly not a day to bring out the best crystal, don't you agree? Ha! Wonder what the cabin crew are doing right now. What do you think? Hmm. I'll have to try to picture what they're doing. Probably just sitting back doing nothing. Ha! <laughs> As if. Alright, we're now coming into the D section. This is where all the American Airlines come in. So, I hope they don't object to uh, Ryanair 186 coming in to park next to them. Now one of these has D12, okay. And D10. So that's 
says now D1. So it's got to be up here. You know, it really is hard to see all of this underwater. That's D1A. And we're about to get round by a kamikaze. Buzz off. And this to this one. This is D4. We are pulling into D4. Passengers are now disembarking. Okay, right. Last thing then. Uh, fuel off. APU off. Battery off. And shutdown is complete. And we can hear it. You can hear the thunder outside. So this was a very interesting flight. Uh, I've been in storms before, but of course I've never flown a jet into a storm. The planes I fly, or flew, were always a lot slower than a jet. I mean, a, a C-47 coming in to land would touch down at about 60 knots, so it's a lot slower than this, and I would be making my approach, say, at about 100 or maybe 110 knots on the approach and then gliding in to about 80 before 60 knots touchdown. That's about what it would be for a C-47. This is a lot faster and a lot heavier. And of course, my cargo didn't complain. But in this lot, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of letters to the chairman of the board about serving champagne, good champagne at that, in paper cups. You can't win, no matter what you do. Well, welcome to Miami. I hope that we did you right, 737-300. Glad to do it. It was a pleasure. Thank you for the request. And I'll see you and everyone else next week on another flight of Ryanair 186. Enjoy Miami. Bye, everybody.